Hey guys, once again we're working on the Armor of God and today we're looking at the Shoes of Peace. Um, so let's, let's start talking about it. Uh, today, right now I just want you to think about um, a child, a small child, how he will uh, put on his dad's shoes and walk around the house uh, trying to keep his balance and fall because it, his dad's shoes takes up his whole uh, Practically his old leg his leg could be swallowed in his dad's shoes Okay uh, Before you had kids You would probably you see muddy footprints. You probably know that it, It's your husband and you would get onto your husband in a nice way and tell him, um, you know, please take your shoes off. Stop carrying the mud in the house or whatever. Uh, but years later, uh, there's a good chance that a six-year-old is the main culprit of that. Uh, because you're wear when you're wearing your daddy's shoes, your footprints can start looking a whole lot like your father's footprints. So I want you to keep that in mind today. Uh, so keep that in mind so what we're going to do is uh, put on our father's shoes uh, by the Spirit's power we're going to to start seeing the tracks of peace that he can make in our lives the Spirit's power um, through the Spirit's power we're going to start seeing that peace in our life. Perhaps the current, uh, the current status of things in your life makes you think no mere chance of a uh, change of shoes can do anything to counteract the chaos that's going on. Um, you're feeling that you're feeling or facing. But when those shoes are God's shoes, his footprints will start showing up everywhere you step. So, let's look at a um, soldier's footwear. Uh, the soldier's footwear, which was distinctive from other types of shoes from that time period, civilians wore soft leather shoes, uh, whereas a Roman soldier wore heavy military sandals. They are half boot, half sandal. The upper part were pierced with open work designs, which gave good uh, ventilation. Uh, the mini straps allowed adjustment to fit to fit it just right to the soldier. Uh, also, uh, parts of the boot that might rub, like the toes or um, the ankle, that sort of thing, they were cut away from the boot. Uh, the soles were made of several layers of leather and were clenched by hobnails frequently arranged in patterns these hollow metal studs provided a firm grip on the sole uh, but for now remember that these dug into the ground and kept the soldiers sure-footed and stable when holding his ground and advancing against the enemy so what is the opposite of peace Conflict, chaos, right? Of all the things the enemy seeks to steal, kill, and destroy in your life, peace is the most is almost always at or near the top of his list. He intentionally stirs up discord, division, disruption, and disturbance, both with you and around you. He is the Lord of chaos and confusion, using every opportunity to upset your senses of your sense of well-being and stability. He wants you uneasy, unbalanced, and filled with anxiety, worry, and turmoil, and lacking peace. Uh, but there's nothing more to it than that, because perhaps, like no other, like no other attack, he knows that by nibbling away at your peace, he and his demonic goons. Can cause his brand of tension to fan in out in all directions spreading out 
to your relationships and filling them with disagreement and frustration. Mark it down whenever you feel over uh, overriding sense of unrest inside or overwhelming distress in your relationship the enemy is somewhere in the middle stirring it up anywhere peace is lacking you can be sure he's at work so naturally a big part of satan's business involves stirring up turmoil in our hearts and our relationships um, our own sins of course including past sins Though forgiven, provide him lots of working material um, for this task, as do the sins of others. If, you're, uh, if you've been a victim of abuse or injustice, for example, the enemy will ride the coattails of those wrongdoings to keep the, plot, the pot boiling for what may start with simmering low-line anger in his hands can turn into an opportunist for unforgiveness which then compound into bitterness and resentment then with these strongholds securely in place you're much more likely to erect emotional walls that will keep people with good intentions from being allowed into your heart you become on edge defensive and able to foster relationships one way or another, he's always out to steal your peace, and that's for sure. Uh, some ways that he um, works to take our peace is in your mind, in your heart, in your body, between you and a friend or you and your spouse, you and your child, uh, maybe even you and a co-worker. But he will um, try to steal your peace one way or another through different people uh, or circumstance so we can say that we get crippled by chaos so think about this the most obvious benefit of the shoe was that it offered general protection for the feet without ample coverage Roman soldiers would be susceptible to harm and injury while traversing rocky terrain Almost, or almost any terrain and uh, you can only go as far as your feet will take you uh, the result of having unguarded feet would leave them if not out of commission at least unable to stand firm for long periods or to move um, and then you would be further impaired a life without peace is simply unprotected crippled unable to move forward hindering from maturity and developing a healthy um, fashion we can't always control the kind of ground that we're forced to march across we may get a pink slip from our job we may get a positive test result from the doctor uh, we may get the, uh, an upsetting message from a friend uh, we may have suffered abuse at the hands of another none of these just like none of the emotional things that you've been personally experiencing is easy to deal with and the enemy will always try to take advantage of the experiences like these to gain access to your life but with the right shoes on we can be protected peace does not refer to the absence of chaos but rather to uh, an overall deeply enriched sense of harmony health and wholeness in the midst of chaos in fact true peace is the be is best detected and measured against commun uh, commotion and confusion when instability abounds yet you remain steadfast when disappointment and confusion are near yet you still you're still capable of walking in the with the spirit infused confidence and stability and steadiness that's how your feet are fitted with the preparation of the gospel of peace peace beyond comprehension so our enemy knows how easy we become incapacitated without our shoes of peace unfit for warfare unable to advance against him he knows eternal internally instability can keep 
um, keep us from being clear-headed and free-handed to fight against him. Consumed with trying to grip into the wrong things, anything, to maintain our balance. He knows turbulence and dis, uh, distance in our relationship will expose us to accusations of hypocrisy and lead us into misguided battles cause we were never meant to fight, uh, causes that we were never meant to fight for. But we can and we must remain protected against this tactic, prepared to rise to, the, to our feet and move forward against the devil when divinely required to do so. Paul provides some instructions to help us live abundantly, keep our sanity, and enjoy stability and balance in our lives no matter how upsetting the circumstances uh, have become or will become. So, let's dig in a little bit. Uh, one of the most unforgettable features of a soldier's sandals or, or his boots were the spikes that um, come from the thick leather soles, similar to football cleats. These hob, hob nails dug deeply into the earth, helping the soldier to hold his ground, to stand firm instead of slipping and sliding on slick terrain, causing their feet to be swept out from underneath them during intense struggles. The shoes offered firm footing. This feature is also a critical factor in maintaining their battle line formations. Okay? Uh, soldiers, by definition, operate as a unit. Gladiators compete as individuals, but a soldier could never be, a vic uh, be victorious without his companions. So Paul outlined the armor that believers are to wear. He didn't only have individuals in mind. He was thinking of the living, breathing entity of the church as a whole. Uh, to... To the extent that the individual are armed with battle, so uh, to the church. One believer united with another is prepared to stand as one warrior girded in God's power against the prince of darkness in, in the culture. Jews and Gentiles of the first century were extremely mean toward each other. Um, their history was filled with contention and offense so they could never imagine a scenario in which uh, two groups could unite in love and harmony. They had neither the desire nor the willingness, and yet the peace that Christ established on the cross was powerful enough to uh, bridge even this division. In Paul's letter to the Ephesians, he pointed to this relationship as proof of an extraordinary power of God's peace. Not just in theory, but in personal practice, it was strong enough to establish stability and harmony, and it's powerful enough to do so now. The peace of God can bridge the gap and bring healing and restoration. And when it does, not only will it cause peace around, around here on this planet to sit up and notice, but it will declare a Declare the manifold wisdom of God through the church by the rulers and authorities in, in the heavens. And that you can find that in Ephesians 3.10. In other words, unity among once divided brothers and sisters puts Satan promptly in his place. However, there will be bumpy terrain. The very fact that a soldier needed specific uh, such specifically engineered footwear implied that his job required traversing some harsh terrain. Um, good traction and were crucial for victory. Uh, since standing firm and maintaining the line could mean the difference between life and the death for each of the soldiers as well as his peers, only these shoes would do. And... Uh, Intimidation wouldn't be a fact, uh, wouldn't be sufficient. 
The terrain of Christian living can be rough too. Dealing with other people in a way that is healthy and promotes peace requires supernatural endowment that can only come from God himself. Only these shoes, the shoes of peace, will do. So, uh, Colossians 3, 12 through 15. Therefore, God's chosen, God's chosen ones, holy and loved, put on the heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, accepting one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, put on love, the perfect bond of unity, and let the peace be of Jesus to which you were um, to which you were also called in one body control your hearts be thankful so um, in uh, other translations Colossians 3 13 uh, is worded a little different it says bearing with one another and this means um, being that the journey toward unity could often be difficult, patience is a must. Grinning and burying it is sometimes a requirement. The terrain that leads toward restoring and maintaining peace with God uh, and with God's people can be like walking uphill depending on the personality, weakness, and intentions. But choose to do your part anyway. Hold that line so that there won't be any holes where the enemy can take advantage. This does not mean that you'll be friends with everyone. It only means that you'll be careful to make sure the unnecessary strife and division don't weaken the purpose of God. The church, then the church will be intact, strong, and ready to advance. Walk in peace and pursue it with others. Is what Paul's prayer is for us and we can see that prayer in Ephesians 3 17 through 19 okay uh, every human being on the planet longs to be nurtured and filled with something uh, with someone but sadly many people waste their waste years and years of their lives seeking this fulfillment in relationships, substances, and ambitions only to still be left meaningless in the end. Uh, when you or we know why this is, right? Uh, the vacuum within our hearts can only be occupied by the things for which it was created. A relationship and intimacy with God. We of course call this heart transplant procedure his, go his gospel, but we don't always, um, but we don't always, um, we're not, we don't always see it. Remember this is how the peace that pro provides a key component for our spiritual armor. So the gospel never stops being a miracle in more ways than one. Okay, there's two types of peace. Two stages of peace are important to understand as we consider what it means to wear the shoes of peace. We stand firm against the enemy and both of them rest securely in the good news of the gospel. The first one is peace with God. And, uh, the second one is the peace of God. Um, we find um, there's scripture, Romans 5, 1. It talks about the peace with God. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. Our justification and declaration of our righteousness before God through Jesus Christ, which simply means good news. The best news we can ever hope to receive 
when we place our faith in Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection, we are finally able to experience the intimacy with God in our hearts. Uh, and that's what we're made for. Never again must we, we settle for unsatisfying su substitutes that aren't capable of um, filling the void that's in our souls. And everyone has that void until they receive Jesus. Uh, they promise peace. They don't deliver peace. Only Jesus, only the gospel gives us true and forever peace. Okay, the gospel doesn't only stabilize our own hearts. It makes stability possible even with the most unloved or difficult people or groups of people that we encounter. I mean, it's not like uh, we're the most lovable at all times, right? And yet, while we're yet sinners, Christ loved us enough to bridge the gap between us and the Father. Romans 5, 8. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. Ephesians 2, 17. To you and to me, and yes, to them too, so how dare we not extend the same grace, forgive them just as he has forgiven us. He'll empower us to do so every single time. Uh, this is where the peace of God comes in. All right, now the peace of God. Our salvation is not just about going to heaven and escaping hell. Those are certainly the most extraordinary benefits of our relationship with Jesus. But if our concept of salvation ends there, we're selling it short. Peace with God establishes our relationship with Him, and as a result, we can experience the peace of God. This is what makes peace a legitimate option for us right now here on earth. Uh, let's look, take a look at Galatians 5, 22 and 23. It says we're supposed to have joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness and temperance. God's Spirit indwells you at the moment of salvation. We see that in Ephesians 1, 13. His job is not only to uh, sanctify you, but also to empower you and develop and exhibit His fruits. So when God's Spirit came into your life, He brought housewarming presents. A nice fruit basket plus an array of personalized gifts for you to use in serving others. As Jesus said to his disciples before his death, and ultimately before returning in resurrected glory to the Father, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, not as the world that gives do I give you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. John 14, 27. So you see, the anchoring and guiding peace of God is already in you as a divine gift, hand-delivered. Your task is to make sure it's not lying, laying dormant, unused, and unappreciated. So you must choose to activate it in your life. So how do you put on the shoes of peace? How do you put on the shoes of peace? Uh... If you look at Philippians 4, 6 through 7, and Colossians 3, 15, uh, these passages tie it together. When we choose thankful prayer over wallowing in anxiety and worry, we demonstrate we're demonstrating an unwavering trust in God. Prayer uh, in gratitude expresses a firm faith. Concentrating on Him instead of being absorbed um, by our circumstance. That tells the Lord that we believe He is able to override any circumstance and overcome even the most difficult issues. This kind of faith catches His attention 
and his response by activating his peace within us, a peace that will not only guard but also guide us by helping us to discern the direction God is leading us to take in our lives. When God sees this type of prayerful, grateful faith, when our minds are squared on Him, the peace of God expands within us. It stabilizes our runaway emotions, centers our mind, uh, guides our footsteps, and even overflows into our experiences with others. It cools our sharp tongue, dismantles our emotional walls, and keeps us from being so difficult to be around. So this is how we put on the shoes of peace. We trust and express gratitude, then we experience the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. So let's start today. Anytime you feel worry or anxiety creeping into your heart, take it as your cue to turn your attention to God. Pray, trust Him, be grateful, and watch His peace, a peace you cannot even begin to explain swell in your experience then your feet will be fitted with the shoes of God okay all right I will leave it at that uh, I love you guys as always um, keep me in your prayers I'll pray for all you and next time we will look at the shield of faith will be next. Okay. I love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.